I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to Board Game Breakfast. Hey, this Board Game Breakfast is sponsored by Pandasaurus Games. They got a lot of great games coming out, but I want to speak specifically that Pastale coming out. This is a pretty neat game. It's a tile laying game, but there's a lot of these games where you put the tiles down. This one, you're putting them on top of each other. So definitely check that out. And thanks to them for sponsoring this video. All right, Dice Star Con is a week away and I'm here in Korea. I need to get going. Well, okay, forget all that for now. Oh, actually, by the time you watch this, I'm in China, it doesn't matter. I'm on my way home. We're going to be putting out lots of cool videos this week. Uh, we are preparing for Dice Tower Con, which is a week away, and there's lots of great stuff coming your way. So this episode is going to be a little bit different because I recorded on the road, so the quality is not as good as normal. I apologize for that, but the contributors are top notch as always. So let's get started. Okay, so normally each week I talk about different links that I find on the internet. So uh, this week I haven't been on the internet as much because, well, I've been being chewed, but also I've just been traveling around the world. But I do want to talk a little bit about how I pick the different things, and that's just basically things that interest me. So even though many times I pick different videos or different people who are uh, maybe, I guess you could call them competition to the dice, that doesn't matter. We're trying to all grow the hobby together. And so when I find videos, I'm always looking for something funny. Now, of course, being funny is certainly subjective. Some people think some things are hilarious. Other people think that they're weird or strange. And anytime you try to be funny at all, people are going to criticize it. But I tend to like a lot of the humor that's out there. A lot of these guys and, and women who do this really hilarious humor, I'm always a big fan of. So I look for that. But I also look for things that are somber. You know, I might see a geek list of somebody who passed away, and I find that to be interesting, but something that makes me think. So. I really would love to find more of this stuff. If you guys send me links, I really appreciate it. A geek list, a, a thread, a blog post, a review, whatever it is. It doesn't matter if the person is a Dice Tower or not Dice Tower. I want to promote this sort of thing. So uh, come back next week and I'll have more interesting things that I find on the internet. If you find something, send it to Tom at Dicetower.com. This is Roy Canne, and I'm here with Danny, the 3D printed DM. Hi. <laughs> I've talked about his channel on the show several times before, um, but I just wanted to get a chance to meet up with you here at Origins and talk about like your experience with 3D printing and how easy it is. I know you do a lot of the printing out of D&D &D models and stuff like that as well. So tell us a little bit about what you do. Sure. So my channel is focused on talking about and teaching people how to 3D print. I'm, I'm very much not a techie person, so it's geared towards the person who is new and beginning. There's a lot more technical channels out there, but mine is focused on just the everyday person who wants to print stuff for... I, I play mostly RPGs, but it's for anybody, whether it's wargaming or board games in general. Yeah, I think it's really cool because, like, one of the main reasons I started making these videos is because I like, watched your stuff, I did some stuff, I was like, man, the Dice Tower in, like, board games needs representation for, like, 3D printing, and there's so many cool things you can 3D print for board games, um, and then watching your stuff, I was like, I feel like I could, like, make, make some 3D printed things as well. Thanks for that, Roy. Um, definitely. So, I think there's so much free stuff available online, and there's so many options, paid options too, both for RPGs, board games. Uh, if you go to this website called Thingiverse that you can go check out and you can pretty much type in you know, your favorite board game and see what people have made, all sorts of inserts and markers and stuff and uh, we're in a very different place than we were like five years ago when 3D printing was just really starting to get big and it's, it's a really great time. It's like it's an amazing time to have a 3D printer for a board gamer. That's one of the things like I keep like hyping on the uh, the uh, show is like oh man the more people that get into 3D printing the more people that will be designing 3D prints and the more things for all these different board games we'll have to print out. Thanks everybody for joining us on this printed pieces segment and um, we'll see you guys on the next one. Hey hey everybody welcome back to Chop Shop in which I talk about a game that I recently let go from my collection and why I did so. And today I am talking about Battle Lore First Edition. It didn't used to be called that. It was just called Battle Lore back in my day. But now I guess I have to call it that. I never did play Second Edition, 
But uh, first edition here was a very lavish production. I, I kind of want to say for its time, which I think is applicable. The reason I'm letting this one go, there are a few reasons for it. It never gets played, for one thing. It is kind of a bear to set up with all the little figures holding their little flags and setting up the map and everything. It's very close and, and uh, similar to Memoir 44 in, in style. But the main reason I'm letting it go is because there are now several games in my collection which are two-player only confrontation miniatures games that simply kind of blow this one away for me. And I'm thinking here about Rum and Bones, uh, second edition, or second, what do they call it, uh, second tide, right? Rum and Bones, second tide. And then uh, newest one would be Claustrophobia, the new Claustrophobia game. It is a similar thing to this, but mechanically, I really enjoy that. It's more robust. I like the theme, the dark, uh, demonic sort of vibe to it way more than this. And so, Battle Lord just isn't going to hit the table for me anymore. I don't see it competing with those games that everything else being equal, I just like the theme more. I just like the pirate monsters and the evil demonic things fighting paladins and all that. So, there you go. That is Battle Lord First Edition. Still... A very impressive production from Days of Wonder. I hope they continue to make productions like this one. And uh, I am always looking forward to what they've got coming out. But for right now, I hope somebody else is going to enjoy this one. And that's it for me, everybody. I'm Zeke Garcia. Enjoy the rest of your breakfast. <laughs> so what's coming from the Dice Tower this week? Well, you know what? I don't actually know because I'm recording this really early. But I do know that we have several reviews. Z and Roy went to Origins to get some of the games here, so hopefully we'll review a couple of those. I am going to review Cupcake Empire and a lot of other things, but we still have our live stuff that's going up this week. We'll still do Testing Tuesday. We still have live board game breakfast on Thursday. We are gearing up, of course, for Dice Tower Con, and so that's coming up next week. But there will be lots of videos and things coming out this week, and the Dice Tower podcast. So check all that out. Also, of course, with all the podcasts of Dice Tower Network at DiceTowerNetwork.com. It's your turn. I guess I'm ready. I'm Alan, welcome to We Game Together. Today's game we're talking about is a game that he tossed down in front of me as we were playing a game. And I'm like, yes. where the heck did this come from? <laughs> Actually, I passed on this one a couple months ago because I'm like, oh, there's a bunch of games that we kind of have like that. But then I heard a better description, or not a, a you heard Z more raving about it. More thorough explanation than Z was talking about it. And, Tom, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'll pick that one up. All right, sure. Happens to be a same day Amazon. Got it that night. Played it. How much did you pay for this? Oh, not roll it. That was like 30, 30 bucks, 30, okay. 32 bucks or something. Didn't know that. That's yeah, normal for a game. Didn't know Come that. On. It's not 100 bucks. Oh it's my fine. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that justified it. Um, Fantastic. I was not in the mood to play this because yeah. I thought it's very engine building. It is engine building. Right. And Completely. I knew it was engine building, and I knew Ellen doesn't like engine building very much. Because I'm bad at but it. But it's only got eight cards at a time, that is. Uh, so it comes with like, I don't know, 40 or so cards. You get eight cards each. And you get to see your entire hand beforehand, and you don't do any deck building. You don't add or subtract from your deck. Mm -hmm. Well, you can subtract from your deck, technically, but that's kind of rare. You get to kind of see exactly what your engine could be. And you get to kind of plan out and go, you know, these are the four or five cards that I definitely want to build my strategy around. Mm -hmm. And... And look at it right up front. I think cool. this game would play real good at like three or four. I think three or four. It was really good between us. It was super two fun is, No, I, I definitely would play two. Really? Very good. Really definitely, definitely it. recommended. I heard it compared to Seasons. I don't know. I've never played that don't game before. I know nothing about it. I know nothing about no Seasons. But this is good. This is a good time. So, come see this stuff. Are you and sure it's on the side the of the picture screen? Or is it over here? The picture of the day. Fade out. Fade to music. See ya. Bye. back to another uh, board game breakfast. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a different um, segment for me because I didn't really have anything to do for accessorize and I didn't have anything to do for just missed it, but we do have Dice Tower Con coming up next week and there's some pretty cool stuff that we're doing with 
painting. So let's get down to the table. I'll show you what we've got planned, Vernon and I, uh, for those painting sessions and we'll go from there. So on Thursday, I believe we have a couple of different sessions and uh, we're gonna have two different sets that we use for each of the sessions. So uh, one of the sessions will be doing uh, the Intercessors paint set and the other one will be doing the Stormcast Eternals paint set. And these are really neat paint sets. So we'll open each of one of these uh, individually, but if you look at that, this is basically what you're gonna be getting inside one of these sets. And on top of that, there's gonna be two sessions, 25 people limited uh, for each session, and each person's gonna walk away with their own set here. As we open this up, you've got, these are full pots of paint here, man. These are not just your, um, this is what you would buy in a store. So I thought that was a pretty neat thing. You've got your bases here and your Marines. And these are the push fit, uh, easy to build ones. So they're not gonna be very difficult. We're not gonna be having to use glue or anything like that. But Games Workshop was uh, generous enough to provide us with some clippers and with a whole bunch of extra paint brushes as well. So, and then you also have the Stormcast Eternals paint set here that uh, we'll go ahead and get torn into well that's gonna be a little bit bad for somebody sorry but as you can see here we've got your uh, stormcast eternals sprues uh, with those really nice bases i just love the way these bases look and i love painting stormcast eternals too i just love painting armor and robes and stuff like that and they have all of that and then you have a uh, starter brush that's right here. The other ones that they sent us are actually layer brushes. So uh, those are pretty those are pretty good as well, six of them. And uh, then of course you have all of the different paints that come in here for that. You got Retributor Armor, uh, you've got um, Cantor Blue, uh, a bad and black got some Reichland flesh shade for making the robes look a little bit battle worn so again these are great painting sets and uh, just really cool really looking forward to this and of course as you can see <laughs> whole bunch of other stuff a uh, whole bunch of uh, clippers whole bunch of uh, layer brushes so again, this is gonna be a great time. So that's about that for everything that you can expect from the paint and take shops or workshops that we're gonna be doing at Dice Tower Con. Uh, like I said before, there's gonna be two sessions. I believe they're both on Thursday uh, for Dice Tower Con. And then one of them's going to be using the Stormcast Eternals box. The other one's gonna be using the uh, Space Marine Intercessors box. And uh, you'll be able to take one complete box home with you. There's only 25 in the first and 25 in the second. I do know that you have to sign up ahead of time at the registration desk, I wanna say something to that effect uh, but there is going to be a sign up list and there's also going to be a wait list for both of those sessions as well so that if uh, some of the people that signed up originally if the first 25 if they don't show up you'll be able to slip in there on that waiting list but that's that for uh, the painting sessions workshops paint and take workshop sponsored by games workshop at dice tower kind hope to see you there on the flip side So what did I add to the library this week? Well, these games here, so I have three here. We have Greenland, Neanderthal, and Pax Emancipation. I don't know if I'm ever going to review these games. I'm gonna see if I can. I'm gonna try to get them to the table at some point. From Phil Eklund, Sierra Madre, these are very complex games. I've heard that from everybody. But I would like to give them a whirl. So, But either way, I know people are gonna enjoy these style of games, so we're adding them to the library. We're also adding Imperials Settlers Roll and Write because we want more Roll and Write games. Wacky Races. A lot of fun here, this board game, Wacky Races from Come On. Then the DC deck building game, Multiverse Box. Actually, I believe inside this box is several things. I got the Crisis Expansion Pack. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here. It actually needs to be organized a little bit more inside this box, but I figured, even though I hate this game, some people will enjoy it. Rolling America, a great little roll and write game. 
the ancient world. This is the new version from Ryan Lockett. Of course, that should go in. And then one of our fans sent this, and I appreciate that. If you guys ever see a hole in the library, you can send it and we'll put them in. Carcassonne Star Wars edition, yay! So I'm glad to add that one also. Hello, and welcome back to Retro Board Game Corner. The game I'm going to be showing dates back all the way to World War I when people used to play it with a pencil on a piece of paper. In the 1930s, several publishers published it as just that. In 1963, it got made into a board game. Here we have PT Boat 109, published by Ideal. This is a battleship-like game in which you're trying to sink your opponent's fleet first before they sink yours. Let me set this up and show you how it works. So this is what the game board will look like set up. Blue player will sit here, yellow player will sit here. Now, this is played just like classic Battleship. You have uh, letters and numbers, and the object of the game is to try to sink the opponent's fleet. There's only two exceptions. You're going to get eight ships, two aircraft carriers, two battleships, two destroyers, and two subs. Now, every turn, you're going to take five shots on the enemy. So for every miss, you're going to put a white disc. For every hit, you're going to put a red disc. And then the other player is going to put a peg, whatever ship got hit. For every two types of ship that have been destroyed, for example, if both your aircraft carriers were destroyed, then you only get four shots per turn. If both your subs were destroyed, then you only get three shots per turn, and so on and so forth. The winner of the game is to whoever destroys the other opponent's fleet. Battleship for Milton Bradley came out in 1967, four years after this one. So why was that one more successful? Well, they streamlined the rules. They went from eight ships to five ships and then only one shot per player, and the components were a lot better looking. So that's why this one kind of got forgotten. Well, that's all the time I have for now. If you have a comment, comment below, or you can tweet them to me at Retro Board Gamer. And as always, may your rolls be high. Greetings and welcome to the Mega Meeple. I'm Thomas Grogan. Are there, there are people that play games, but they only have fun doing it if they win? Otherwise, they consider the time playing a waste? Back when I was like six or seven years old, I used to throw temper tantrums if I didn't win a game. I remember vividly a game I uh, was playing called Trouble. Those of you who grew up in that time, you remember that game. And I would throw a temper tantrum if I didn't win. Now, my mom, did. she didn't yell at me, she didn't spank me. She did the one thing that cured me of being a sore loser. And that is, no more gaming for you. And she took all of my games, put it up on a top shelf in the closet. She said, you can play those games when you learn how to lose. And that literally cured me of being a sore loser. The purpose of gaming is to have fun, whether you win or lose. It's the social time, the camaraderie of, of having friends over and having a blast laughing. That's the focus of our game time, not whether or not we win or lose. Personally, I think people like that need to grow up and get over themselves. Hashtag just saying. Makes me wonder how they deal with disappointments out in the real world. Well, things very rarely go the way you want it. So, my advice to you, if you're a sore loser, chill, man, have fun. Not only will that help you make more friends, but it just might contribute to help you deal with the d disappointments in life. So we're gonna find out more about the Mega Meeple. Just go to the website, blah, 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 yeah, 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 whatever. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Hi folks, my name's Andy and welcome to Portable Gaming. The show about games which are fun to play in pubs and cafes. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about OK Play, or Sinko Linko, as I believe it has been renamed in the US. This is a very simple abstract tile laying game, which probably is the simplest game I'll explain to you here in Portable Gaming, but it's one that is probably worth your time. So, the game is very simple. You and your opponents will take a stack and place it before players of these tiles. On your turn, you'll pick up a tile, place it on the table. Your opponent shall also pick up a tile, place it on the table so they match up the adjacent edges. You can't go kind of at a weird angle here, always on the adjacent edges. You will then place your next tile, your opponent will place their next tile, and so on. 
with the aim of getting five in a row, either orthogonally or diagonally. Once you've run out of tiles from your own personal stack to put out, you simply pick up a tile that's already been placed and move it to a new spot. And that's the game. It is very simple, very basic, follows on some very obvious kind of game mechanics you might have seen elsewhere. But it can be a lot of fun. I played this with some friends of mine and we got a more really intense back and forth game of all trying to sight each other out and play misdirections and fakes. But also it's such a simple game, I imagine people of any age can play that. I look forward to teaching this to my young nephews, I imagine children, elderly relatives who maybe don't really want to think too deeply about it can enjoy it as well. The pieces are excellent, they are hard wearing solid plastic pieces, it is very portable. You can attach at least spindles here on this cool little rack and carry it around. In fact, the manufacturers recommend like attaching it to a bag. Uh, it recommends it actually as a game to kind of bring people together with a language barrier. And I feel even if somebody who's non-verbal and even like a language or accessibility issues could probably still get away with a good game of okay play. Um, because of that, I recommend it. It's not going to be the best game. It is pretty inexpensive. And I got this on sale, but it's average price about fifteen pounds in the UK, and it's hard wearing. And I feel if you just want a quick, simple, abstract game that pretty much anybody can play, OK Play could be it. Anyway, thanks folks, have Andy, and it's your round. This week I want to talk a little bit about forgiveness. Now, not necessarily in real life, that's a much bigger subject than I talk about that, but forgiveness in a game. So let's say I'm playing with Jerome, and Jerome double crosses me in a game. Then, when do I forgive him? Do I forgive him? Here's the thing, I, people say you shouldn't metagame, which means take something from one game to another. But I don't think it's possible. Because if Susan betrayed me in the last game, and then in this game she says, let's be friends, let's work together. I mean, there's no way but I can't remember the last game, right? And then let's say I pretend that I forget it and we, we work together again, and then she betrays me a second time, the third game, I mean, it only makes sense that I'm gonna go, yeah, I don't trust you. So the point of the matter is, is that you can't ignore what people have done in previous games. And sometimes someone will dramatically betray you in a game. I just wonder though, if someone betrays you in a game, are they forgivable? Now, I mean, in real life, you'd be like, I'll never forgive you. But really, you have to, if you're gonna play with that person again. And I think betrayal is a dish that's served occasionally. See, if you're always betraying people all the time, no one's ever gonna trust you. So you need to have some sort of trust. You have to trust people occasionally. I think the best players are the people who betray you often, and yet somehow you still believe them when they say they're not going to. But for that to happen, they have to be trustworthy sometimes. So the fact of the matter is, you can't just say, I'll never trust you again to someone the instant they betray you. Because if so, you're taking betrayal out of games. So there has to come a time where you quote unquote, forgive somebody else. Why? So the fact of the matter though is though sometimes is there a point where you can't forgive someone? Again, talking about a game. Like, oh, they betrayed me too many times or they really backstabbed me in the game. And that happens in diplomacy and other games. My question is, when is someone beyond forgiveness in gaming? For me, not very often because usually they'll betray me and then the next week I'll forget. That's what I think this week anyway. On today's episode of Charlie's Quick Review, we're going to be looking at Dominion, made by Donald X Vaccinated. <laughs> it's a really fun game. Charlie, Charlie, gaming's what he do. It's time for his favorite segment, Charlie's Quick Review. Yeah. The point of this game is to try to get the most victory points at the end of the game. This game is so much fun as far as combo building that you forget to go for these. And I actually just have more fun building an amazing combo deck. I kind of lose all the time. Suck at this game! Super fun! The way a game works, you get A, B, C, action, buy, clean up. So A, you can play an action card down here, do whatever it says there. B, you can buy, so like if I want to buy this card, it costs five coins, see on the bottom. Or I can actually buy more coins, higher value coins, or I can buy victory points, which gives me the goal of winning, but it also clogs up my deck because they don't work in combos. C is clean up. What I do is I take all my cards, I put them in a box, and I throw it away. This game has some excellent artwork. It's got really good card design, really cool artwork, and you have really good... Why? Super fast! Super easy! Super fun! Super combo! C -c 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 
and you can set up some really neat combos. Plus combo building. Play a card, play a card, play a card, do this, do this. Look what I just pulled off this thing. Super combo. Definitely. Best game, best game, best game, best game, best game. Play a card, 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 play a One of the Akai is out. One of the Akai is out. One of the Akai is out. That might make you feel good because you have lots of point cards, but it's in reality going to help you not at all during the game. In, 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 in your face nastiness, I've played with, there's several decks that have interactive, and I've played with all of them in one game, and it's just evil, 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 evil game. It's basically just a big box of cards. But there's a ton of cards, and it's an amazing, simple game. If you haven't tried this out, if you haven't played it yet, you should. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Look what I just pulled off. So who would I recommend this game for? In short, I recommend this pretty much to everybody. Best game of 2008, easily. Thanks for joining us today. For more video reviews, check out the website at www.youtube.com forward slash Charlie's Quick Reviews. I'm a big fan of Magic the Gathering because, you know, I'm cool like that. But I like Commander. That's my favourite thing. But I think one thing that I've really realised about myself is that more... No, not more. That would be insane. But liking Magic the Gathering is, is having two hobbies. One is playing Magic the Gathering. The other one is spending hours crawling through many YouTube videos and deck techs and commander lists and cards that work well with each other. There's so many, like, thousands of cards. I just really enjoy discovering cards, researching cards, looking for synergy, looking for ways I can do cool and interesting things that I think I've come up with for the first time, but people were doing it 20 years ago, literally. It's such a fun part of the hobby for me, although sometimes I will turn to a page or a notebook and look at them and go, none of these words make sense, and then realise they're all Magic the Gathering cards. I thought I'd had some kind of weird turn. It was very strange. But it is a secondary hobby, and frankly, I probably spend more t I do spend more time looking at cards and researching Magic the Gathering cards than I do playing Magic the Gathering. I don't, I wish it was the other way around, probably, but I just really enjoy that aspect of the hobby, and I, I didn't think I would, and I really do. So if there's anything that you think that's kind of like that, I think painting is probably like that as well, perhaps, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Dead Last. Hope you, everyone, is doing well, and I'll see you next week. Bye. So that's it for this week's Board Game Breakfast. Next week, uh, I'll be back in town and we're getting ready for Dice Tower Con. Lots of exciting things coming. I mean, lots of exciting things coming this summer. I appreciate everyone that I saw as I travel. I appreciate all those who watch. And especially, I appreciate the contributors who take time to do each week of a great segment on this show. Until next time, I'm Tom Bassel, and you have been watching Board Game Breakfast on the Dice Tower. Thanks for watching Board Game Breakfast. Tune in each week for your daily dose of gaming goodness with Tom Vassell and all the gang. Until next time, I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching Board Game Breakfast, a Dice Tower production. Sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., an amazing place to buy board games. Cool stuff in stock at CoolStuffInc.com.